Today we're going to do a full service PM and oil change on my 2012 Freightliner Columbia with a 12.7 Detroit Series 60 motor in it. I'm going to post a bunch of links in the description below for some of the different uh, tools and stuff I'm using here and supplies. So check for that. And then also I'm going to post uh, some links in the description below of some previous videos that I did showing you how to, to do a couple things here we're going to skip over because I already got a video on it. So show you where to get one of these great big oil drain pans, smaller one. This nice big funnel here. That's a, I just bought that. Pretty nice. And then some of the other supplies that we're going to use. So I've already warmed up the engine a little bit to get the oil a little warm up, warmed up in it so we get a good drain on it. And uh, we'll get started here by draining the oil. Some advantages of doing it yourself. Also some disadvantages. Disadvantages would be, well, you're going to make a little bit of a mess. And it's probably going to take you a little while. But uh, that's all right. We can do a, as advantages, we can do a better job. We can get a good long drain on that oil. I don't know if you notice, probably when you go to the quick lubes or whatever, they don't let the oil drain all that long. There's still oil coming out when they put the plug back in. So we're just going to get a good long drain on it, get all that dirty, sooty oil out of there. And uh, we're definitely going to recycle the used fluids here. You're going to need a couple empty buckets. The capacity for this system is about uh, 11 gallons because I have a a bypass oil filter on here that takes a little over a gallon. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the channel. Yeah. Do it yourself, semi. Hey, yo, on. DIY, semi. Yeah. Come on, won't you let me yeah. help you simplify what you like me? Hey, like yo, me. DIY, semi. Yeah. Come on, won't you let me yeah. help you make a profit yeah. and like me? Yeah, we gon' break it down, break it down. Come on, make a profit, break it down, break it down. Simplify, don't stop it, break it down, break it down. Come on, make a profit, break it down, break it down. Simplify, don't stop it, hey. All right, first thing I'm going to do is crack the oil drain pan here and uh, get this baby draining. This is a half inch plug on this one. There we go. Now we're gonna let that drain for let that drain for a good long while. And while that's draining, we'll move on to some other things. Good to note too. Inspect your oil drain plug. It's magnetic. If there's any anything going on in the motor there, uh, you could attract some metal here. And uh, you definitely want to know about that. Okay, while that oil is draining. Let's just do some other checks uh, while we're waiting. So start here with the, the power steering fluid. Make sure your level's good. Here's a minimum cold, maximum hot. We're right dead center in the middle there. So that's good. You know, it's a good time to change your fuel filter. I'd already changed this yesterday and I'm not going to show how to do it. I already have a video on that. I'll post a link in the description below. Or go back it's the first video i made it's a little clunky and long but you'll see how to how to service one of these davcos here top off your windshield washer fluid then your coolant i run red extended life coolant in this truck and it happens to be new so the quality is good yet check your coolant level and then in addition to that depending on what kind of coolant you have or whatever, buy yourself some coolant test strips. Probably see them do this at the, at the quick lube. I'll post a link in the description below. What you do, you take one of these strips and you dip it in there, pull it out, and then compare it to the little chart here. And it'll tell you your freeze point, the alkalinity, blah, blah, blah. 
And then you'll know if you need to add some supplemental coolant additives. Like I said, this red stuff is new. It's good for a long time yet. And I don't need any of that. But coolant filter, on the other hand, if you don't run a, an extended life coolant filter, you will want to change your coolant filter every PM service. I run an extended one with the SCAs in it. They call it a charged one. I don't really need that but because I got extended life coolant. But I got a case of them and I want to use them up. So I change mine once a year or they say 150,000 miles. I do mine between 100 and 125. I just got it on schedule to do it once a year. But uh, I'll do a video on that when it comes time to do it. But for now, you just would shut both your water valves off, screw the old one off, screw the new one on, lubricate your O-ring. Before you do that, then you'll need to add a little bit of makeup to your reservoir tank, maybe a quart or so. Now, next, we're going to service this bypass filter here. I already have a video on that. Go back and watch that if you want to learn more about the ins and outs and whys of bypass filtration. But for now, we're just going to change that thing. So changing this thing's pretty easy. Just need a filter wrench of some kind. Spinner loose. It's going to be a little heavier than it looks. And always take your finger, run it around, make sure none of the O-rings stuck to here. You should, could also go underneath and look up at it. And also just check the surface of your filter here, make sure the O-ring's still there. Sometimes it'll stick to the uh, filter housing. Anytime you change a filter, dip your finger in some oil, lubricate this O-ring up here. And this bypass filter, it is not necessary to prime it with oil because it's outside the, the loop of the main filters. Make sure you get her started straight. It should turn nice and free and true. Make sure it's not cross-threaded. Get her... Uh, in contact with the filter base. This one up here, I tend to uh, tighten it just a little more in case it catches some road debris or something being here behind the bumper. This bypass filter here being just behind the bumper, I worry about it sometimes. You know, if it catches some road debris or something, I worry about it coming loose or, or, or walking on me. So I just take a paint marker, I mark the housing, and then the filter, and when I'm checking my oil, I can just see at a glance if it's you want to check your air filter here. If it's time to change that, replace it. I have a permanent reusable washable one in here from Fleet Air Filters. Uh, link to that below. I also have a video on servicing these. And if it's time to change it, change it. Not a fan of blowing these things out. If you watch that other video, I'll explain to you why. Cabin air filter. This is not due for service yet. It's clean, so we'll just leave it alone. So we don't let any contaminants in there. Now I'm going to use a strap type filter wrench to take the crankcase oil filters off. It just slips around the filter. Then you can wind it up tight. Take your half inch drive, put it in there. And you just turn and it'll spin the filter loose. Some guys like to take and punch a hole in the bottom of the old filter before you take it off to let the oil drain out. I don't necessarily like to do that. There's nothing wrong with it, but I just feel like then if you do that and you have a problem, something goes wrong, then you've disabled the vehicle. You can't start it. You can't move it. So I just uh, spin them off with the, with the oil in it and deal with the mess. All right, here we have our new filter. Check with your manufacturer, make sure you get the right size filters, the right kind of oil, the right weight of oil, 
and uh, do everything the way it should be done. Anytime you're going to put a new filter on, these full flow oil filters, you want to prime them. The correct way to do it is to prime them through the small holes, the small outer holes, because then when the, fil when the oil gets sucked through the filter, it gets filtered. Brand new oil, it shouldn't be contaminated, but you never really know. For sure they could have had a problem at the facility or the plant. Got some metal filings in there. So we're just going to fill this filter. So once again, lubricate your gasket o-ring up here. Helps it spin on nice and not bunch up and also helps keep this o-ring from sticking to the filter housing when it comes time to take it off. Alright so up in there you see our filter bases. Uh, what we're looking for is to make sure that nothing is cracked or damaged, everything's in good shape, and that there's no pieces of the old gasket left from the old filters. I took a paper towel and wiped around each one of them, so we're ready to spin the new filters on. Once again, it's important to make sure the filters turn free and easy and smoothly so that they're not cross-threaded. And then tighten them down so they contact the base and tighten them three quarters a turn or so past that or a little more. If you don't know how tight they should be, there's always directions on the filter itself. It's done draining. I threaded back in my plug. We're just going to torque that thing to 35 foot-pounds for this motor. There we go. I had it right. You'll have to look up and see what your torque spec is for your motor. But definitely use your torque spec because, like I said, this is just a fiberglass pan and if you sit here and crank on it, you crack the pan, strip out your threads, and uh, that'll suck. I forgot to mention that Ended up doing about an hour and a half drain on the oil. After an hour, it was still st dripping fairly steady, so I had to do a couple other things. I went and did them, come back in a half hour, and it was done. So about an hour and a half. None of your quick lubes are going to do that for you. We verified that the drain plug is tight. The filters are on. That filter has changed. So we're ready for oil. We get set up here and start dumping oil. All right, so while I'm dumping this, it's worth mentioning that, you know, I said there were some advantages to doing this yourself. One of them is you can really control the costs. I'm using Mobile Delvac here. That's not my normal brand of oil, but it was on sale. These buckets were on sale. And then there was an additional mail-in rebate. So the total cost for the oil came out to almost exactly $4 a gallon. I can't pass that up even if it's not my normal brand. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just fine. Delvac isn't bad oil. So uh, there you go. Really another advantage. Disadvantage is these buckets are heavy and they're hard to dump. <laughs> um, so with the oil, you know, I got about $45 into the oil. Filters, I might use these Amsoil filters. They're a little more expensive. Uh, for the two crankcase filters, they're about $20 a piece, so that's another 40 bucks. So we're at 85 bucks. And then that bypass filter, which you probably don't have, that was 40 some dollars, so call it 130 bucks. And then a fuel filter. Did I get them for 10 bucks from the place I get them? So 140, 150 bucks. Throw a water filter on there if you need it, as opposed to what is it? Almost $400 for a conventional oil change at the Speedco. We're going to do some grease in here so you could tag a, you know, $10 on there for two tubes of grease. Um, and we did a, a better job. We got a lot more oil out of it. And we're going to grease it better. I'm going to show you that. And probably going to do this as a two-part video because otherwise it's going to get pretty darn long. All right, the oil's in. I pulled the dipstick to make sure we were up to the full mark. We're a little bit higher than the full mark. So 
now we got to start the truck. The very first thing we want to look at is make sure our oil pressure comes up to normal. On this motor, normal is 50 pounds. It'll probably be a little bit higher than that because it's cold oil. And uh, if it doesn't come up, shut your engine off immediately. We're going to run the motor for a few minutes, let it fill up all the filters, a bypass filter, and run it for a while. And then we're going to go under the truck and check for leaks. There we go. It's exactly what we want to see. Oil pressure came up to a little above 50, which is normal for this truck in cold oil. So I'll run it for a little bit and then we'll make sure we have no leaks, check the level, top off the oil. Yeah, oil is in, ran it, filled the system up. We're going to check the level here. Just, to, just at the full mark, just over. So we're good. Uh, checked all three filters for leaks, no leaks. Checked the drain plug, no leaks. You have to go underneath it and visually check. You can't just look for spots on the ground. So we're good here. Oil's changed. We'll call it good for this video. Stay tuned for part two.